Hey, hi, hello, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jesse, and in today's video, we are going to be going over a lot of bookish things. Today's video is coming to you in five parts, and we're just gonna be jam packing it with lots of bookish things. Recent reads, book shopping, book haul, bookshelf setup, and currently reading. In the last video that I did like this, somebody described it as like a grab bag video, and I just love that descriptor. So this is a bookish grab bag video, a variety of bookish content for your viewing pleasure. Let's get started. We're kicking things off with a recent read section, or not so recent reads, because one of these is from August. By the way, these are all books that I've read that are not a part of any kind of like video project. Like these are just books that I read for fun and not for any kind of experimental video or anything, just for pleasure. Not that the video projects aren't pleasurable. I get a lot of pleasure out of them. I need to stop saying the word pleasure. I realize that there's a lot of books that I've read that I haven't even talked about on my channel this year, and that's because like I don't do wrap ups anymore because I sort of, for a long time, have had this complex where I'm like, I can't be like all the other books booktubers I gotta be unique and different and like I need to get over that. It's really not that big of a deal and it's kind of like what unites us. Like there is overlapped content that like everybody does. Everybody does TBRs, wrap-ups, book hauls. So this is my way of saying that I'm potentially bringing back wrap-ups on my channel. You may or may not see one here at the end of this month. The first book that I want to talk about is Kappa. I read this when I was in New York in August and I really enjoyed it. It's a rather short book. This book basically just follows this society of Kappas, which are these creatures, these frog-like creatures. This is literally a picture of a Kappa right here on this cover. They're frog-like creatures that almost have like a beak situation going on. And the description says that they're infamous for drowning unwary toddlers in rivers. They're these like very unhinged creatures. And this was so much fun to read and compare how their society differs from our society. In it, we follow this guy who is a patient at a mental hospital and he ends up like falling into the world of Kappas. And it's essentially just him exploring the Kappa world and all his interactions with the Kappas that he comes in contact with. There's a scene in particular that I really want to read but it's so graphic and so weird and bizarre and it's about a kappa giving birth if you've read it you know you know it is wild also kappa babies like as soon as they're born they're walking and talking that is a nightmare one of my favorite things was learning about kappas and otters and how they became at odds because they ended up having a war at one point and how this war broke out is that a kappa was trying to poison her husband so she poisoned his hot cocoa and was like trying to get him to drink it and an otter accidentally drank it and died causing this like huge war between the otters and the kappas. That is just touching the surface with how unhinged the things are within the kappaverse. It's a really interesting read and I really enjoy my time with it. I would recommend it for people who just really enjoy characters from folklore, from fairy tales. If you like books that explore these really unique characters and fictional societies, I would highly recommend this book. I give Kappa a 3 out of 5 stars. Next I read Miles Morales Suspended by Jason Reynolds. Now I am a Jason Reynolds lover to the end. I'll ride for him at dawn. Jason Reynolds to Fender. But with that being said, this was the first time I've read a book by Jason Reynolds where I came out of it feeling completely underwhelmed by it, which makes me so sad. Oh my god, I'm like so sad to be put in this position because obviously I love all of his other books. Like so far, this is my first miss by him. You know, not every book by your favorite author can be a banger, so I will let it slide. But let's talk about it. I loved his other Miles Morales book so much, it's just Miles Morales Spider-Man, so that alone had me having high hopes going into this one, high expectations. But I just completely found myself disappointed by the end of it, and I almost feel like it has to do with the style of writing, which is surprising. This book is written in verse, and typically, like, I love his books written in verse. Like, they are... Ooh, they are so good. Some of the best books I've read written in verse come from Jason Reynolds. But... I feel like the writing fell into a lazy place at times. Oh my gosh, I feel like I'm whispering because it just like hurts to say it, but I do feel like the writing at times fell into this lazy place, and I... <sighs> I kind of can understand some of the choices he made in this book because like stepping outside of it, it's almost like an art piece. Like he uses words to kind of make pictures sometimes. He uses methods that I've seen be done in other books written in verse. I feel like he probably has used these same methods in some of his books written in verse as well. But for some reason, it just like did not land as well in this book. An example of what I'm talking about is like repeating words over and over again. I just have this example right here. This page just reads and on and on and on and 
on and on and on and on over and over and over again. This one just says up, 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 up. And I get that like this repetitive nature is a tool that is used to kind of like really push a message, really kind of make you understand the feeling of what's going on, what's happening. But to me, sometimes it just comes off as lazy. Again, another repetitive one where it just says tap, 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 tap. Mind you, it is representing the actual sound of tapping that's taking place in the story, but it's just, it just feels lazy. But again, I can like take a step outside of my own thoughts and my own criticisms and like recognize that like he's using this method in order to drive a specific feeling, drive a specific tone. And like, I understand that. I just feel like overall it did not work for me. And this one just did not land as much as his last Miles Morales book. Visually, this is a fantastic book, but content wise, it just was not for me. I gave this a two out of five stars, which kills me. I want to bomb it. Ah! Then I was in Kansas City recently and I picked up The Sisters Grimm, which is book one in a series, and tell me why I decided to buy the entire series without having read this book. Why do I do these things? But you know what? The good thing is, I read this and I really enjoyed this. Plus a lot of the books in the series were in the clearance section for like a dollar, so I couldn't pass it up. As you can see, I have not taken the time to get the stickers off the books, but it's fine. I posted about this on my Instagram story and a lot of you guys replied being like, oh my god, that's my childhood, I love that series as a child, which has me really excited to read this series. Series. In this series, we are following the Sisters Grimm, which, if the title wasn't clear enough, let it be clear, we're following the Sisters Grimm. They've ended up in this foster care program after their parents have disappeared, and they've just been having so many issues with the different caretakers that they've been ending up with. But one day, out of the blue, they end up getting taken to their grandmother, who they kind of thought didn't even exist. And when they get there, lots of like weird and strange things begin happening. And basically, they find out about this world full of fairy tale characters. And all these like adventurous things begin unraveling. Traveling. It is so much fun. It's been a minute since I've read a middle grade book and like ugh. It just made me realize like how much I miss reading Middle Grade because it's just so much fun. Specifically in the beginning, it has a very, a series of unfortunate events meets Spider Wick Chronicles vibe going for it. And then we obviously dive deep into the fairy tale side of things. The Sisters Grimm in the book are related to the Brothers Grimm. So we see lots of characters from the Grimm's fairy tales. And I just like loved seeing this author's interpretation and just like how he worked them into this world and how they all kind of interact with each other. It's just a lot of fun and it's a wild ride. There's so many like dark and eerie things that happened too, which I wasn't expecting, but like I was here for it, I was into it, and I have now committed to the entire series. So we'll see how this goes. I gave the first book in the Sister Grimm series a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Finally, more so recently, I read Such Small Hands. In this book, we are following this girl named Marina, who ends up at an orphanage after her parents pass away. And during the day, these girls are like really mean to her and bully her, but then in the nighttime, they end up playing this game called dolls, where each night one of the girls becomes a doll and can be completely controlled by all the other girls. Marina ends up being the ringleader behind this game, but one night she ends up putting up a fight to become a doll, and that's when things get a little dark and twisted. Spooky, confusing, and incredibly eerie, that's the best way that I can describe this book. It took a second for me to kind of find the flow with this story because it is a bit confusing just in the way that it's written. Marina is very clearly dealing with a lot. She's obviously just lost both of her parents, so there's a lot of trauma there. And and that is affecting her perspective. And then she's also now in a new place at this orphanage dealing with all these little girls being mean to her. So she's just dealing with a lot and that kind of just like clouds her perspective, just affects the way that she is written on the page. And it was really interesting following her perspective. It does kind of fall into a predictable place. Like once they begin playing dolls, you're like, oh, I think I know what's gonna happen. But the thing that shook me up the most is getting to the afterward and reading about the fact that this story is based off an actual event that took place. I was shook. I'm still honestly shook. I'm tired of saying the word shook, but like that's the best way to describe how I felt shook. I ended up giving Such Small Hands 4 out of 5 stars. Those are just some of the books that I've read for pleasure recently, but I have been reading a lot of other books for other videos that I'm working on, so look forward to that. I also finally got around to fully getting caught up on my Goodreads. I had fallen like severely behind on my Goodreads and like adding the books that I had read throughout the year, so I'm finally caught up there if you want to follow along with my reading. Let's be buddies over on Goodreads. I will leave my link down below in the description. But I want to hear from you guys down below in the comments. Have you read any of these books that I mentioned? What are your thoughts on them. If not, let me know some books that you've read recently. I want to know. Let me know in the comments down below.
we're gonna do a bit of a book haul. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little hesitant to do a book haul just because I feel like a lot of you guys will not even be interested in these books, but I'm interested in them and that's all that matters. But I just feel like a lot of these are like not like new, exciting releases. And they're also like very niche books. I'm not trying to come off as like, I'm not like everybody else. I'm picking up unique and different books. Like I'm not trying to be that way. I'm just like being real. Like only two of these books are somewhat new and they're manga. It just might not be that exciting of a book haul for some of you. I went to several indie bookstores this past weekend and also Barnes and Noble. I ended up getting a majority of my books from the used bookstore just because there were so many great finds in that bookstore and I want to go back and do some more browsing because they just had so many good things with a solid price tag and that's something that I always appreciate. It always feels good when I walk out of a bookstore and my wallet isn't crying. Let's dive into the stack. The first three books I'm going to be talking about together and that's because they're by the same author and they are in the same genre and that is middle grade horror. I feel like in general obviously it is like spooky season, spooky month, so I'm like drawn to like books that like give me the frights. And I've been really intrigued by like middle grade horror recently, more so like ones that feel nostalgic and I think that's because I've been watching the Goosebumps series on Disney Plus and that's just been like putting me in the mood for books that feel like Goosebumps. I don't know why I'm not like drawn to picking up the Goosebumps books as of recently. I feel like eventually I will want to collect the OG Goosebumps books and read those as well, but I picked up these three books and I mostly picked them up because the covers are iconic. First up here I've got Book of Nightmares, Tales to Make You Scream. I mean this cover is just so terrifying. I feel like they don't make middle grade horror book covers like this anymore. Though there are some terrifying ones out there. I've browsed the middle grade section every time I've gone to Barnes and Noble recently and there are some freaking scary book covers in the middle grade horror section. I was kind of shocked but they just don't make them this nostalgic anymore. I'm obsessed with this. Then we've got this one, Book of Ghosts, More Tales to Haunt You. This is the sequel so I'll have to get my hands on the first book obviously. Also this book is wrapped in plastic which I'm very intrigued to find out why it's wrapped in plastic. Like was it kept in pristine condition or did they not want you to read the book while you're in the bookstore because of what's inside? Will I get haunted by a ghost after reading this book? I sure hope not. But also another iconic cover. Just perfection. This one is called The Skull of Truth and down here there's a little tagline and it says it's talking and it won't shut up. For some reason I feel like that's a little tagline that people would give me too. He's talking and he won't shut up. All of these were cover buys. I'm not even gonna lie about it. Next up stupidly I picked up this book which is Professor Winsnicker's Book of Proper Etiquette for Well-Mannered Psycho Fans. Psycho Fans? Psycho Fans. The reason I say stupidly is because I picked this book up thinking that it was like a Spiderwick Chronicles style book because it like had that kind of feeling to it but I didn't do much research. I just kind of like added it to my pile but then I got home and was like kind of doing some more digging and I was like this feels like I don't have context for what's going on in this book, and that would be because it's a part of the Eleven Thumps book series, so I have to read a full series in order to read this book, which I think that I will do. I think that I will commit to reading that book series eventually. I'm intrigued enough. Like, after doing some research on it, I want to read it, so I will get to that at some point. But until that day comes, I will just have this, like, random companion book to that series. I mean, by looking through the pages, can't you see how I thought it could be similar to the Spiderwick Chronicles? Let me know down below in the comments if you guys have read the Levin Thumps series and if you recommend it or if you don't recommend it, which will make me sad if you don't recommend it. Next up, another very random purchase, and honestly a purchase that I did not really need to make, but I got the Everyday Angel series by Victoria Schwab. If you know anything about me, you know that I collect Victoria Schwab books. I just never got around to picking up the individual books in the series by Victoria Schwab. I do own a bind up of the series, but like, I had to have these for my collection. It just made sense, right? Right. The answer is right. The last book that I picked up from the used bookstore is the first book in the Seven Wonders series. Do I have any business starting another book series when I know what my commitment issues to series looks like? Absolutely not. Yet I continue to enable myself to pick up more books from series. From what I gather, we follow these kids who are destined to die and they are sent on a quest to find these missing pieces of Atlantis and if they bring them back to Atlantis, then they will be like allowed to live and it will also give them superpower abilities, but like I could be so wrong, I could be so off. Honestly, it kind of is giving me Percy Jackson vibes and the fact that like Rick Riordan himself blurbed the book might have been what swayed me to pick it up. And pick it up I did, so we will see how I feel about this. Next we move on to my Barnes & Noble stack. The first thing that I got was a 
coloring book. Do I already have eight coloring books that have not been fully colored? Mind your business. I just fell for its cuteness. Like, look at these characters on this cover. I needed to have it, and so that is why I currently have it. Because the cuteness made my self-control disappear. I don't want to talk about it, okay? I did something bad, and it felt so good. Then I picked up volume two to the summer Hikaru died. I read the first volume this past summer and really freaking enjoyed it. It's very mysterious, very like monstery. -esque. It was intriguing enough for me to want to pick up the sequel and read it, so I'm excited to read this. Definitely gonna be a devour situation because I want to know what happens next, and I will devour this. Finally, I picked up Box of Light. My Barnes & Noble was having a buy one, get one 50% off in the manga section, so like, I had to take advantage of that. I couldn't not take advantage of that deal, especially because manga can be expensive. So any deal I can get, I'm going to take advantage of. This synopsis sounds fantastic. It's basically about this little convenience store that is like, like the middle ground for people who are going to pass away. It's a quiet convenience store at the crossroads between life and death, and so we just like follow all these people who are about to pass away, which sounds really sad and morbid, but like, hello. Those are the kinds of books that I love to read, books that make me feel something, so I'm really looking forward to getting into this one. I know it's going to be a bit of an emotional and dark one, but I'm excited to read it. Yeah! Come at my emotions and rip me up. <laughs> Hi friends, let's chat. First off, the elephant in the room. The haircut, we love it, we're here for it. Secondly, this was supposed to be the segment where I put together this really nice currently reading bookshelf where you like put books on the shelf that you're currently reading. I felt like this would just be a nice bookshelf for me to have on my desk with the books that I'm currently reading. As somebody who reads multiple books at the same time, this is the perfect setup for me. I was planning to do this like really fun cutesy montage of me putting it together yesterday and then I got like five seconds in and I got frustrated. Here's the deal about me, I am terrible at putting together furniture, like it is just not Something that I am good at. I feel like there are some people out there, some of you probably, who are just like fantastic at putting things together. I am not one of those people. I had help putting together the bookshelves you see behind me. So I had some help on this. The main issue that I was having in putting this little small miniature bookshelf together is this light that runs behind the books. So I did have some help, but I still don't know if it's going to come together because the light is still like pushing out. I can't get it to go any deeper. I don't know how this is going to go, but I decided I'm not gonna do a cutesy little montage. I'm just gonna like, put it together and show you what it looks like. But we can totally chat while this is happening. What should we even chat about? Let's first see what my next step is. So I need to put the K's and the B's together. Give me that K, give me that B. How does one talk and put together furniture? That does not seem like something I should be doing because I will mess something up. I'm gonna be so for real right now, I honestly don't need any other kind of bookshelf. Like I have enough bookshelves in my house. I have these behind me. I have a setup in my room where I have like the floating bookshelf situation. I have a, I have a stack bookshelf. I don't know what they're called. Not a stack bookshelf. I want to say ladder, but ladder's not right. Anyway, some other kind of long stack-like bookshelf in my room. Then I have a bookshelf that's honestly similar to this one in my living room. And then I have other bookshelves in my living room. So I'm clearly doing fine when it comes to bookshelves. I just have a lot of books. And truthfully, my collection is only growing. I don't see it slowing down anytime soon. I do, in fact, need to do a book on haul because there's just so many books that, like, I got in the past that I just don't feel like I would vibe with anymore. And there's so many books that I've read that I don't like that I just need to get rid of. Of, but I have a hard time getting rid of books. I'm just gonna be so for real with you guys. The thing is is that I also feel like I want to put more bookshelves in this room as well. I have a wall right here that I feel like I could fit more Billy bookshelves on, so <laughs> I have a problem. It's going beyond having a book buying problem. It's now a I have a bookshelf problem where I keep getting too many bookshelves, but I don't want to talk about it. Okay, okay, I did something, I did a thing. Listen, if I complete this and it's like a functional bookshelf, I'm gonna buy myself a book as a treat, okay? <laughs> I'm super excited about the fact that I have my Goodreads fully updated finally. It took me so long, the day that I finally decided to like catalog all the books that I had read this year, it took me forever. And I felt so bad because I feel like so many people's feeds just had like my updates on the books that I was adding. It was like 60 something books that I added to my Goodreads. So I feel like I was just like clogging up people's feeds and I feel really bad about it, but it felt really good to finally get it updated. Goodreads at one point kept thinking that I was a robot and had me answer questions to confirm that I wasn't a bot. That's how much I was updating my Goodreads. But it's just been so nice to like have that fully updated and now I'm able to like actively use Goodreads because there for a while I was like avoiding using it because like I knew that I had so much to add. And now I can just freely use it and feel so good about it. I think next year I am going to try to like keep updated both Storygraph and Goodreads just because like I want to 
might give Storygraph more of a chance. I feel like I haven't given it that much of a chance and I just want to see like all that it has to offer. I feel like I really would enjoy the stats and things but the idea of keeping up both Goodreads and Storygraph like stresses me out a little bit but I think I'm just gonna like copy and paste what I said in my Goodreads review over onto Storygraph. Like that doesn't seem like it could be that difficult. It's just like one extra step to the process. I just like the detail and information that you get over on Storygraph. I do feel like it is missing that like community aspect but I feel like eventually it could get there. It is still very new and at least they're like actively working on Storygraph whereas Goodreads I feel like is not actively being worked on. Like it's very uncommon that we get some kind of update on Goodreads, which is just ridiculous. Like one, you're owned by Amazon, which is like a billion dollar company, and there isn't even a two. Like that's that's it, you're owned by Amazon, you have tons of money that you can put into Goodreads, so put more money into Goodreads. That's all I have to say about that. Oh, I forgot about another bookshelf that I technically have. Like my bed frame has like shelves in it, which I don't think are necessarily meant for books, but like, of course I'm gonna use that for book storage, why wouldn't I? It just makes sense. I see a shelf, it becomes a bookshelf. <laughs> I did another one, success. Things are going well. I'm just like nervous that it's going to not go well when I get it on the actual backing because the light is still like protruding out a little bit. We'll deal with that battle when it comes. There's no need to fight that battle right now because we're not there yet. I feel like so far this month, something that has been surprising me is the fact that I've been sticking to my TBR. I mean, not like fully sticking to it, but like I've been reading books that I said I was going to read, which is really exciting and I know that like the TBRs that I make now are more so like mood reader, like very loose TBRs. The fact that I've been sticking to my TBR is sus. Like what is going on with me? Have I changed? Have I turned over a new leaf? I sure hope so because I would love to like consistently be doing TBRs, but I just am afraid to do them. Not afraid to do them, but like it just like sucks. I hate when I set a goal and I'm not able to like achieve the goal. Like it just makes me feel bad about myself. So that's partially why I stopped doing TBRs because I started to feel bad about myself. And I don't ever want to feel bad about myself when it comes to like bookish things because like obviously this is supposed to be like a fun situation. It's not supposed to make me feel bad about myself. Like once it starts making me feel bad about myself, I'm not gonna wanna do it anymore. It just is exciting that I've been reading books off my TBR this month. But also knock on wood, fake Ikea wood. Another one. <laughs> okay guys, are you ready for the grand reveal? Give me a drum roll please. Ta-da! It looks so small, but it's it's pretty decent sized. I did it though. I did it. I, I built something. I completed it. It's beautiful. Also, gotta light it up, baby. Three, two, one, boom. We got lit. Let's talk about the books that I'm currently reading and then we'll place them on this shelf. Even though this is not where this shelf is gonna stay. It's gonna move to my desk, I believe. But I also need to like clean up my desk before I can put this on my desk. First up, I started If We Were Villains. This was on my autumn TBR, so it feels good to be reading a book that was on my TBR. I'm currently 66 pages in and so far, I'm intrigued by the things that are going down. I do like the fact that it follows these group of kids that are involved in theater. And I feel like some shady things have already happened and some like questionable things have been said. So I feel like it's only gonna get darker from here. I will say though, that I am struggling to keep track of the characters so far, which is a me problem. It's not the book's problem. It's a Jesse problem. I, in general, have a hard time keeping track of characters when there's like more than three characters to follow. And I feel like there's not that many characters to follow in this one, like maybe five prominent characters. I'm still struggling. Next, randomly, the other night, I started this Edgar Allan Poe short story collection. It's Tales of Mystery and Madness. And it's illustrated by one of my favorite illustrators, and that is Gris Grimley. He's one of my all-time favorite illustrators. I feel like he's illustrated so many books lately and I have had a hard time keeping up with his work. This only contains four of Edgar Allan Poe's stories. I feel like I've read this before. I need to look it up on Goodreads and see if I actually have shelved it, but like I remember the first story, which is all that I've read so far in this book. That's The Black Cat. I remembered it like verbatim, like story beat. So like I definitely have read that one. I just don't know if I've read the entire book. So it's a mystery. It just feels like the appropriate time to dive into some of Poe's stories, so I'm gonna do just that with the rest of this collection. I don't know how this one's gonna fit on it because it kind of sticks out, but it doesn't look too bad. I'm also reading The Swallowed Man. I have been reading this for quite some time now, which is ridiculous because it's a super short book, but it's taken me forever to read it for some reason. It's told through the eyes of Geppetto, which I think is so fascinating because I feel like more times than not, when you get a fairy tale retelling, you're obviously seeing the story retold from the main character's eyes, and I feel like it's nice to have kind of like a side character. And I feel like it's just nice to have this fresh perspective brought to the table and seeing Geppetto's take on what went down in the Pinocchio tale. And finally, I started this middle grade series, which I had been seeing pop up at all these like used bookstores that I had visited recently. And so I went on eBay and tracked down a majority of the series. And that is Edgar and Allen, Rare Beast. This is obviously inspired by Edgar Allan Poe as well. And in it, we are following these twin siblings who are pretty much not like all the other kids and are very grim and weird and unique. And they 
they constantly are like wreaking havoc upon this town and pulling pranks and just getting in all sorts of trouble and it just seems like such a fun and somewhat grim middle grade series and so it just really intrigued me and I'm excited to get deeper into this. I'm only like 12 pages in but what I've read so far a plus. It's a good time. Those are all the books that I'm currently reading. As you can see on my beautiful currently reading shelf, I feel like it's still hard to see it. There we go. You can see it better now. It's just so beautiful. I just love it. Let's light it up. <sighs> Magic. And just like that, we have reached the end of today's video, but I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I really appreciate those of you who have been tuning in lately. Let me know down below in the comments what you guys are currently reading, and if you would recommend it so far, or if you wouldn't recommend it so far, just let me know your thoughts on the book that you are currently reading. I want to hear from you guys. If you like this video, be sure to go and hit that like button. If you want to see more bookish content from me, be sure to go and hit subscribe or go and hit that bell icon, and you'll be notified every time I post new videos. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope your day is bright, that tomorrow is bright, Keep reading what your heart desires, and I will see you soon with a new video. Bye, y'all.